Welcome back to Panda Pen Club. Today I'm going to review an interesting little pen, the Fuluin 2062. A striking and unusual little pen that prompts some pondering from me. But catchy, natty design aside, how does this pen stand up as a writing instrument? The first thing I thought of when I saw this pen was the Jetsons, the space age counterpart to the Flintstones, produced by Hanna Barbera Studios and premiering in 1962. I don't know if this was a coincidence or what, but perhaps this comparison was meant to be because the Jetsons was in fact set in none other than the year 2062, which also happens to be the model number of this pen. The look of this pen is, well, it's adorable, isn't it? It's unorthodox. And it's worth some scrutiny because it is an unusual little delight. I wasn't quite sure where the Jetsons comparison came from when I first saw it. I think maybe it was the orange colour which is bright and bold and for some reason makes me think of 1950s Formica serving trays. Who knows why? And it's a colour that would also appear to permeate much of the Jetsons day-to-day -day lives as well. This sort of bold but muted, dazzling yet earth-toned colour which to me comes off as really retro. It's available in other colours as well, but in all cases, I think this retro look is preserved by the fact it's overlaid with these one millimeter deep silver gridded lines on the shaft and cap of the pen. And I should add, this pen is all metal, every bit of it. The clip, the almost entirely unusable and therefore entirely decorative clip has the brand name Fuluan written on it, dashed off in this handwritten style, which I can't help but compare to the logo for Hanna-Barbera Studios. To me, that's uncanny. It's the contours and form of this pen, the Fuluan 2062 as well, perhaps, that really makes the comparison for me. It has this bulbous appearance, although the Shaft shoots straight up from this terminal silver dome on the lower finial. The cap has this zeppelinish bulge, this balloon bellied expansion in the middle of it. Instantly recalls the futuristic domes on stalks look of the architecture in Orbit City in the Jetsons. The Jetsons in fact lifted a style of architecture known as Googie, which emerged in the 1950s in Los Angeles. The style was named for Googie's coffee house on Sunset Boulevard, which was designed by the architect John Lautner, who was a student of Frank Lloyd Wright. According to the fearsome art critic Douglas Haskell, writing in House and Home, Googie's starts off on the level like any other building, but suddenly it breaks for the sky. The bright red roof of cellular steel decking suddenly tilts upwards, and the whole building goes up with it like a rocket ramp. Why so wacky? What was the point of Googie architecture? And will it help us get towards the point of this pen? In the time that Googie architecture emerged, cars had become a family staple. Middle class families had moved out to the suburbs and restaurateurs were trying to figure out how to get them to eat out more often. And they were trying to shrug off the grubby, somewhat sleazy image of diners that was carried over from maybe the 1930s. Make them want to come in, make them want to eat, and maybe don't make them too comfortable that it's, uh, you know, that they're gonna stay. Boom, Googie worked. It practically smacked motorists around the face and told them to pull over and buy something. Building as billboard. As a result, you can see it all over the American roadside architectural landscape in this era. Cantilevered roofs, neon fixtures and steel overhangs, skyward trajectories, boomerangs, soft parallelograms. Googie architecture conveyed velocity, progress, trust to the American consumer. It did so very successfully. The Jetsons did something pretty similar. A typical nuclear family with good, honest values. Are you going? George! Daddy! Father! Living a heavenly life of utter convenience in the not-too-distant future. Washing, ironing, vacuuming. The Fuluen 2062 carries with it one very cool convenience that might well appeal to many people and sort of makes this pen in some ways. It's a bijou little pocket pen, really, more or less. It's short, just 118.5 millimeters in length. Uncapped, it's a fairly unusable 109 millimeters in length. However, 
you can extend it to the admirable writing length of 138 millimeters and you can do so very securely by the screw-on posting mechanism you have on the threaded lower finial which enables you in a very cool way to secure the cap to the lower finial and thus extend the pen to a comfortable writing length. And this functionality somewhat recalls the Mont Blanc Bohème, of course, somewhat. So Googie architecture, the Jetsons, where does the Fulawen 2062 come into all of this? Both the show and the architecture were a good fit for the optimistic self-image of the middle classes in the America that existed in the 1950s and 60s. A similar sense of thrusting self-confidence and emergent consumer culture was present in the period this pen was designed and made 2000 to 2015 in China. Economic progress was kicking in for the middle classes in much the same way during this time. And there was even a trend towards futuristic and sometimes plain old bonkers public architecture. From the Sheraton in Huzhou to the Lotus Building in Wujin to the Central Television HQ in Beijing to the Gate of the East in Suzhou, sometimes known as the Underpants Building, to Guangzhou Mansion, the Donut, of course. This was city governments competing for international prestige to central government and on the international stage. Now, however, these local officials have been banned from such exuberant uses of public funds. Why? Concerns about over-promising a future that wasn't necessarily deliverable? Was it perceptions that striking appearances and photogenic first impressions were being prioritized over usefulness? Or was it perhaps a feeling that some of the results were just a little bit too provocative? Hmm. I can't imagine. So, more pertinently, perhaps, was the Fulawen 2062 designed with a bold, thrusting, exuberant future of endless convenience in mind? It's certainly eye-catching, it's certainly original, it's certainly very cute. And if the Jetsons reference seems far-fetched to you, I challenge you to come up with a better reason why this pen is called the Fulawen 2062. And I'll just add one more thing to my, my <laughs> really impressive argument. Enthusiasm among Chinese business people for expressing their sci-fi geekery in extravagant and large-scale projects. Check out the $95 million, 260 meter long headquarters built by diehard Star Trek fan and billionaire founder of Chinese firm NetDragon, for example. I rest my case. But one more thing before I wish you live long and prosper, the writing experience. This is where I need to give you an important word of warning about the limitations of this pen's design. First off, we have the nib. It has Iridium Point, Germany, written on it. It lays down a 0.5 millimeter line. There's decent flow, becoming a tiny bit chalky if you really push it on your writing speed. There's a pleasant pencilish crunch of feedback combined with a smooth sensation, which for me is really an optimal writing sensation. Pen perfection. First off, the problems. There's a very dear little converter that comes with this pen. This is it right here. It has one of these slidey mechanisms on it. It's absolutely tiny. And that's all obviously utterly spellbindingly glorious. Until you've used the pen for a little while, at least for me, I found that the mouth of the converter has fractured in multiple places. It's the only time I've ever had this happen. And the results are explosive spillage on the interior of the Fulawen 2062, which is, well, a little inconvenient, a bit of a pain. I replaced the converter with the converter that came with my very pretty little Moonman N2. Now it works fine, but it's something of a pain. Next the less curable issue. The section on this pen is madness. Crazy. I don't know what they were thinking. I'm not sure this is the most useful comparison to make or whether it'll be universally understood, but it's about the same size as a raisin. More usefully, perhaps, it's 11.4 millimeters in length, just enough to get your fingertips perched onto. But it makes the writing experience a little well, it sows a certain amount of doubt. You're never quite sure what to do. You're hanging on, you're, you're gripping onto these threads, which some people will find a little uncomfortable. Alternatively, if you're writing for an extended period, 
as I have, and I have persevered, your, your experiment with slipping your fingers beyond the section onto the shaft and holding, gripping the shaft as you write. This doesn't really feel comfortable or natural either. So I'm, I'm not sure what happened. This is a pen with so much visual appeal, so much design and thought, perhaps seems to, one would think, has gone into it. And yet this is inexplicable to me. Now, the writing sample. Now, as you can see, my fingers do not know where to grip. They can rest on the section itself, or they can hang on to the shaft. Either way, it feels a little uneasy to me. I'm writing, as I have been a lot recently, on Claire Fontaine paper. And our little Fulu one is loaded with Monteverde, California teal. The ink flow is good but it's maybe a little on the dry side. There's a nice bit of feedback, but it's a smooth writer. It's just holding the damn thing. Lovely panda seeks jinxed zebra for quick game of whist. Now, this pen can be had for $13.50 on Amazon, plus you have to solve the cartridge conundrum, assuming the issue I've had is something affecting the included converter for other people as well. It's not a standard international converter, I don't think, so you'll have to harvest off another pen or seek out a suitable converter especially. So that's another little issue to add on to the purchase price. And a size comparison. Our Fuli Wen Pilot Metropolitan. Jinhao 159. Malami Safari. And here, we have a Sharpie, an uncapped. I'll just show you quickly up against the Metropolitan, just how profoundly curtailed our Fuli one is. Microscopic. However, you chuck on the, the cap at the end and you have a really plausible writing length. In summary, I see this as an excellent shopping list kind of pen. It's all metal, making it very robust. On the chuckability front, assuming you replace the dodgy little converter with something a bit better built, I'd give it a 4.5 out of 5. Borderline, full-blown abandon. Do whatever you want. Don't go too wild, but, but it'll, you can feel secure chucking this wherever you like, into your handbag, your, your backpack, whatever. For day-to-day, -day, the all-metal build, the decent nib, the screw-on functionality on the lower finial, and the bold unorthodox design make this an excellent pen to carry around with you for incidental bits and bobs but you don't want to be doing more than amending a list with it given the difficulties i've encountered with the section if you enjoyed this review don't forget to like comment and subscribe to panda pen club on youtube and when you click subscribe please click the bell as well it really helps us Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.